Hey, what's this? It's a time machine back to 1998 through 2000, it looks like. These are the Nintendo Power Supply catalogs, and they would have items back in the day that would be sort of uh, unique, usually. Some of them, I think, might have been in stores um, or available from other places, but some of them were very specific to Nintendo Power. And at the time, a lot of people didn't even think about it, really, how unique some of those things would be or how collectible they might be someday in the future. But I'll show you one that I got that I really didn't think too much of. I just kind of got it with, uh, I guess, probably some kind of points or some kind of deal, I think. So it was cheaper than uh, buying a version of this thing in the store would have been. So Nintendo Power, I had a subscription back around the N64 days, like the early kind of N64 days. And they would send you stuff randomly uh, that would come with the magazine. Sometimes it would be a tape, like these tapes. That's back when uh, Pokemon first came out, uh, before the games had even come out, I think. And maybe right before the show had even started. And then they had, like, for Diddy Kong Racing, they had a tape. So they would just mail these out for free, and they would uh, come with your subscription. So a lot of this stuff, and especially these power supplies... Uh, it was kind of like a um, older version of uh, the Club Nintendo stuff that they did later. Like there's a Club Nintendo statue that uh, you could buy with points. If anybody remembers that, I think like in the 3DS days is when they kind of cut that out. And it was actually a pretty good deal. If you were buying a lot of Nintendo games, you could buy this just with points. I don't even think you paid shipping on these versions anyway. And now they have some kind of a deal that's somewhat similar. And I think there's still maybe some kind of exclusive type stuff, but it's kind of few and far between. I don't really keep up with it too much anymore, to be honest. But uh, this is before even that Club Nintendo stuff. And, of course, you can see over here, one of my prized possessions. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a way to kind of display it. I'm going to have to put it in maybe like a some kind of a softball holder or something maybe even bigger, like a football holder. <clears throat> but it's the Millennium or Millennial 2000. Or kind of not Millennial, I guess. Uh, Millennium 2000 uh, controller, which they made 1,000 of, apparently. So I don't know. How that makes sense. Um, but I had, like, uh, entered this contest through Nintendo Power, gave them a postcard. You would just write your kind of name and address on a postcard, and then you'd send it to them uh, with the contest that you wanted to enter. And with no fanfare, no warning at all, this just showed up in my mailbox one day in, like, an unmarked kind of a box. And so it was great, because I actually needed a controller at the time. Uh, I think I only had one real Nintendo 64 controller, and then, uh, like, one of the Mad Cats kind of a things that was this big, chunky, weird thing that nobody ever wanted to play with. So this was great. I just started using it as my main controller. Little did I know that, uh, you know, years and years in the future, it would be collectible and worth, I guess, hundreds of dollars, I think we're sitting at now. Uh, I think it's crept up on a thousand dollars for some um, but maybe they have more paperwork and stuff with them. I don't really remember what came with it. Maybe like a little sheet of paper, a bag, and like a box, I think. But like a mailing box. So they really didn't do uh, a lot of, um, I guess, material for it when they sent those. But yeah, I won mine and still have it to this day. So I'm going to have to find a good way to kind of display that, I guess. But... Uh, these are the power supply catalogs, and they're a little different than the contests that would have been in the magazine. These are um, things that would come out throughout the year. You can kind of see uh, we've got spring of 1998 here, and then we go to fall and winter of 99. I don't think I have all of these 
uh, are all the ones that I received. So kind of jump around spring and summer 2000. And here's one that seems to be just summer 2000. And this one I think is more of like a specific Pokemon themed uh, catalog. So they kind of started to see where their bread was buttered, I guess, and uh, Nintendo started to send more specific catalogs. But here, this one's really interesting, I think. Um, if I can get it in frame for you here. So it's the Super Power Supplies, Nintendo Power, spring of 1998. And so this would have been only uh, just I guess less than two full years after the Nintendo 64 came out. So you're talking like the Yoshi's story kind of uh, era. And of course you got Donkey Kong. I guess Donkey Kong 64 was probably out around that time. And you've got the Mario family and some Donkey Kong stuff there too. And these were some of, I, I as I recall, some of the few kind of plush type of things there were. Uh, that you would get through Nintendo Power, but I think they had a few maybe in the store too. Um, and I remember looking at these things, uh, but I never really went for any of them. I don't think I bought any of this stuff. Um, and I assume it's some of it's kind of collectible nowadays. You have a Yoshi t-shirt up here, Yoshi Story Tot T. I guess that's smaller sizes. Um, and Yoshi Story dog tags. So you can kind of tell what games were coming out around that time. The dog tags were only $5. I don't know what the uh, shipping was on these kind of things either, though. Here you've got a $32 uh, college sweatshirt for Yoshi. Uh, they're calling it Yoshi Junior, so I guess that's youth. Yeah, I guess they're saying these are smaller kid sizes. And then watches. They seem to always have watches in these things. And sometimes they were barely even uh, branded at all. And look at that. We just came to a page with some of that stuff that is barely branded. This is kind of like the kind of stuff that uh, like advertisers would kind of give out for free a lot of times. And it's just barely got a little Nintendo mark on it. So it makes it a roll-up Nintendo calculator. Obviously, this is long before smartphones or even many people, I guess, carrying around cell phones, probably. I guess if it's 1998, got a color change football that has a Nintendo logo on it and a character pen, just a ballpoint pen. So I feel like that would go dry and then you just have this kind of useless pen sitting around. A combination lock, which I'm guessing at $8, that was probably made out of plastic, it looks like. I'm sure someone could just break that off with their hand. Uh, a mini radio. Again, these are just things that, like, kind of every company, I feel like, just slapped a logo on and gave out or sold. You've got some message centers. People used to put these on their doors at college a lot, I know. Um, I don't know about these specific ones, but... I'm sure some of this is strangely collectible nowadays. And it's got some somewhat of a charm to it, I guess. But like, look at this. Again, barely any kind of logo on that shirt. It's just a white shirt with the tiniest Nintendo 64 logo. But it's fully embroidered, it says. But then there's this, a jersey t-shirt, and it says Nintendo in like, what, 8-point font right there? So, I, you know, I kind of, like, just skimmed through these back in the day. Here's a Nintendo hat, the world's most bland Nintendo 64 hat, at least at the time. I guess nowadays it's got, like, a minimalism that people might think is cool. There's your Mario College sweatshirt, $40. For $40, you could have a Mario sweatshirt with an M on it. And I think these things were fairly rare. Like, I don't remember seeing in Walmart, you know, any kind of Mario clothing, really, at this time. Um, I don't know if it, maybe it was on just a downswing for, like, merchandising. Here's a real generic kind of backpack. I mean, you could just get any old backpack and stick a Nintendo 64 sticker on it, I think, and it would be about the same. Um, but I think the... Uh, it was not like it is today. So, for anybody who's... Um, 
used to how things are today with, you know, you go into Walmart and you'll see at least, I don't know, 10 Mario, Yoshi, Sonic, you know, all sorts of video game shirts. You really didn't see a ton back then. Um, maybe a handful when something was really big, you know, during the height of the NES or something. But you would not see a lot just on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that's kind of where the catalogs came in and why they could charge $40 for a sweatshirt. Plus shipping, I believe. I guess we'll probably get to that at the end to figure out how much uh, you'd have to pay to ship these. So here's some of the characters, 18-inch characters. Um, I never had any of these. I don't even remember really seeing these in real life. I never really knew anybody who got these things. And, like, these are things, they're kind of a little off-model, like Yoshi and Diddy Kong. I mean, they all look a little funky compared to today's standards. Bowser looks a little sad. Um, so I guess this is a set of eight. This is probably kind of like Beanie Baby size around that time. Um, so you can pay $36 and get a set of eight. But uh, it was fairly unique because, like I said, you didn't see this much in stores. You, there wasn't a Nintendo section in the toy store. I think they had the Nintendo, like the uh, Mario applause toys that came out in 88 or 89, somewhere in there. And that was about it. You really did not have much else. Um, here's some keychain plushy kind of things. You can pay $15 and get a set of those. So it's also... Well, I guess you could buy them individually, too. Maybe? For $4? So, and there's the Yoshis. Obviously, they're riding that wave of uh, Yoshi story. And what's this? The Nintendo 64 System House. I actually had one of these for... Yeah, System 3, I think, was the company that made these. And... I think this one was just barely branded, probably, again. Um, if even that. I don't even know if it had an N64 logo anywhere. But uh, I bet this is just like a barely repurposed um, NES kind of a model. Where they just changed some of the molding, I guess, at the factory to let it fit Nintendo 64 stuff better. Uh, but yeah, I had one for my NES that I did not get from any kind of Nintendo power. I think I got it probably at Funko Land back in the day. And that drawer opening, that of the plastic, um, I still have it, but I don't keep a system in it. Um, because, obviously, you can't hold a ton of games there. And I always feel like the controller cords, it's such a pain in the butt to um, kind of get those in there just right, where you're not jamming the controllers every time you shut the door. And the cords in the back, I remember trying to put a Super Nintendo in my NES one. And I believe it crimped the cords in the back. And I don't know. I just was never a huge fan of them. I kind of liked the idea at one point, but it in actual practice didn't work out that well. There's your N64 game protectors because they came in the uh, cardboard boxes. So if you wanted your games to feel like they were protected by these plastic clamshells. I kind of liked those until I started getting more games, and then I realized you had no idea what each one was, because there's no labeling system of any kind. And I think the manuals kind of flop out of there, too. Um, if it even holds them very well. And then you've got the Power Rack, which I remember thinking um, that might have been kind of cool. Uh, because I was getting so many Nintendo Power magazines at the time, and different things like that, and still to this day I have a lot and it would be kind of cool but if you can kind of tell I don't know if you can see it says it's corrugated plastic so this is like the stuff that I think they make like um I'm trying to think of something they make out of those maybe like the United States Postal Service like bins and stuff it's it's like cardboard but plastic so it's corrugated you know obviously it's the same construction and it looks like it's just folded over there. So I could really imagine that popping open eventually. I don't know. Let me know if anybody has one of those. Then you've got your Nintendo Power Magazine binder. That'd be kind of, I guess, interesting. But once you get past that certain number of uh, magazines, it'd be really hard to mark that. You have to kind of personalize it on your own. The 
trading card holder. Now remember, this is a catalog from the year 1998. So they're showing off some Mario Kart 64 trading cards, uh, which are kind of interesting. I'm sure they're a little collectible now. Um, it's one of those little four card uh, binders with the plastic sleeves, but we have not yet entered the era of Pokemon yet with this, so obviously we know what they would be showing off in the binder if it was. And we'll get to that in these uh, catalogs. It's kind of like traveling through time. Here's the Nintendo 64 Traveler. These are, there was always these kind of backpacks and different things if you wanted to pack up your entire system and take it to someone's house, which I very rarely did. I think once I took it to my grandfather's house on a weekend, but uh, I don't even know if that's branded anywhere with like Nintendo on it, which at the time I really would have thought it was the best if it had lots of branding on it. So obviously I've cut something out of here. So you see that I've used this. <laughs> um, I think I must have ordered something from that. They had these CDs that would only work in really specific CD players. You'd have to have like the top loaders or else I think it would, it could like get stuck in them or something. As I recall, it's like certain CD players did not like these shaped discs, but they were kind of interesting. Um, 12 bucks. Yeah, I guess it's a decent price for CD. Uh, and then you've got the Nintendo 64 Trilogy CD. Uh, I guess I would have been interested in this at the time, but I don't think I ordered any of these. And you can tell we are so far back in time that there's still some Super Nintendo stuff hanging around. Donkey Kong Country 3. And there's Killer Instinct music. And Mario 64 was big still. Of course, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64. There's your Nintendo branded CD holder. So some of those would have been kind of interesting. The Legend of Zelda t-shirt. I feel like that would have been really unique at the time. Um, thinking that when they made this shirt it probably predated Ocarina of Time just barely or they were kind of making it with the game or around the same time um but that shirt I guarantee you wouldn't see a Zelda shirt in many stores it'd be extremely rare from what I recall from the year 1998 so yeah you would uh use superpower stamps apparently Superpower stamp stamps can only be accepted with mail orders. So yeah, you would get some kind of stamps in these, I recall, that worked kind of like a money type of substitute for subscribers. Um, and so that must have been what I cut out there. And then there'd be a little order form. Even back then, my mom had like a decent scanner and printer, so I probably wouldn't have... Well, I don't know. I, maybe I would have called to put in the order. Honestly, I'm not sure. We had the internet, of course, you know, by 98. Um, I think we were going online here and there. But it was still kind of rare to order stuff online at that time a little bit. Uh, there it is. Here's your shipping and handling charges. So I knew that you'd be paying some. They had you figure it out based on how much you were spending apparently. So like that sweater, if all you got that was that Mario sweater, you would have been spending, it looks like nine bucks on shipping. So you are paying pretty close to uh, $60 for that Mario sweater. And at the time, $60 was a magic number. And I would have definitely, if I had $60, started looking for whatever brand new Nintendo 64 game I wanted to buy, not a kind of generic looking Mario sweater. <laughs> so yeah, here's some player's guides. It looks like they still had some leftover Super Nintendo player's guides that were selling for still 11 bucks or 15 for Chrono Trigger. That must have been a big player's guide. The Mario 64 player's guide was only nine. 
I don't know exactly how they decided their pricing on these. Then you've got player's guide holder, which, I mean, it's very specific that you have to have the player's guides in there, not the magazines. Again, I mean, that would have been kind of interesting to, I probably would have liked that kind of thing to organize them in at the time, but I don't think I ever bought any of those. So here's this. Uh, a lot of times you get these for free, the um, different player's guides with your subscription. So each time you renewed, you'd get a different um, player's guide. So that's that one. And then you can tell that something happened in the next one. This is fall and winter of 99. And something has happened in between spring of 98 and fall of 99. That has changed uh, Nintendo Power quite a bit. And I remember at the time being kind of annoyed with Pokemon taking over. Um, here's Funky Kong. And uh, that is the little, uh, I'm trying to think of his name right now. Um, somebody will probably say it in the comments. Um, but from Donkey Kong Country 3. So like, obviously a lot of these are really modeled more after Donkey Kong Country 3. I think they're kind of like getting rid of some old uh, um, supplies there. And then they've got a humongous watch. This is obviously like a wrist watch for Pokemon, but it's they've blown up the picture for some reason huge Let's see what we got right off the bat you're looking at a full page of the pokemon stuff because that was big at the time so i'm trying to get too much glare i guess uh there's that watch that we saw in the beginning uh 25 bucks it looks like they were trying to get that on that watch and I remember seeing a lot of watches like that. Like, I think I had a Mickey Mouse watch kind of like that, where it's just very generic overall. And then one little part on the dial maybe has an image of the character. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the Pokemon clothing. And again, this would have been when Pokemon was pretty new still. So these would be, you would not probably see these in the stores, or at least I don't remember seeing a ton of clothing things in the stores especially with adult sizes. And then you've got hat pins. And they were really big on putting the numbers on. I think they were, um, you know, in those first generation games, you know, you knew Pikachu was number 25 and Meowth was always going to be 52 and Snorlax 143. And obviously uh, things are a little different now, but that was, it seemed like in a lot of their marketing, that was going to be, Kind of right alongside their name was always going to be their number. Uh, how much were those pins? $22 for the hats. Uh, the pins were just 10 bucks, So, eh, not bad. And there it is. I knew that was coming. The Pokemon cards in the little books. And I think I've seen people with uh, these books online. Um, again, I was not into Pokemon uh, right away. I had no Pokemon stuff, did not give it a chance until maybe sometime around this era, actually, I guess, winter of 99, yeah, I fall, fall or winter of 99, maybe, is when I finally might have picked up Pokemon Blue, and then you can get the Pokemon videos, but I think, uh, I think a lot of people would be interested in these. They were only five bucks for these little holders, but they're, again, those little four card kind of binders. But yeah, they had a lot of Japanese cards showing off in there. Maybe they just wanted to show off that Togepi because that would have been weird at the time for people to see it. So, yep, that was the trading card holder. So you can get a set of nine, really nine. Three of each color. That's weird. For 40 bucks. I'm not sure why you would need three of each color. I don't know. But, yep. That's when Pokemon cards were pretty big, I guess. I might be missing one where Pokemon first broke into the catalog. Again, I think I'm missing some of them here. Or quite a few, probably. And then these are carrying cases for your Game Boy. So Game Boy Color was out, of course, at the time, and there's Pokemon Red. And you've got the dog tags are back again. 
Um, now they're selling them as sets for 14 bucks a set. Looks like those Game Boy cases are $9 each, or you can buy them both for some reason, for both of your Game Boy colors. I don't know who, I mean, I, I guess there were probably families with kids that had, like each uh, brother or sister had one. Donkey Kong 64, they're still kind of showing some things for that. It could be really cool and have the Donkey Kong 64 pocket watch with a holder. That'd be interesting with uh, bananas, apparently, instead of the numbers for your time. That was strange. Uh, and then we've got controller sleeves. And I think this is one of those things where at the time I just wanted to play games, you know? And a lot of this stuff was, I mean, it was okay, I guess. I didn't really think of a reason I would need a sleeve. I guess to soak up sweat off your hands or something. I don't remember being that sweaty as a kid that I would need a glove on my controller. Um, but I remember at the time I would have just loved to get a controller for like a discount with the power points or whatever. So I wouldn't have to spend uh, actual cash in the store. Because at the time I was broke. No job. I was a kid. So, uh... Is not old enough to work yet. Uh, and then we've got the plushes again. Brand new. And these are saying brand new. But, like I said, I think they're Donkey Kong Country 3. Uh, I said, well, I don't know. They're all over the place with these. And they're retiring the Zelda ones already. So these are obviously Ocarina of Time, and these, I think, are pretty collectible now, as I recall. So these are something that you could have gotten from here for $5 each when they were retiring them. That's a pretty good deal. And I bet if you would have stocked up on those back then, you'd be doing all right today. And then you've got some more Donkey Kong kind of plush, but with hard plastic head kind of action figures. And they're retiring the Princess Peach. Uh, and then brand new versions, I guess, of the Yoshi dolls. Or plushes, I guess I should say. Here's that old creaky game case again. And they're still showing some of the cases. Some of those are alright. Uh, here's an interesting Game Boy Color case that's pretty big. And it's got room for the printer. And there's the camera up there. Anybody notice that camera looks a little weird, doesn't it? A lot of people seen a camera like that, the Game Boy camera. Obviously, we know what the Game Boy camera is, but they only came in a few colors. Is that one of the normal colors? Maybe we'll see. So, here's your carrying case again. This one, I think, is more of a backpack style kind of thing. It's got the Nintendo logo. There's your plastic corrugated things. So, a lot of times, they'd bring out the uh, same old gems again. Here's your... Uh, Pokemon yellow, red, and blue. So yeah, we definitely skipped ahead. So now yellow apparently was out, um, or at least coming out very soon. And Pokemon Snap was out. So we're kind of, we've, we've skipped quite a bit between spring of 98 and uh, fall of 99 here. You've got your soundtracks back. Uh, this time you had some Game Boy Color headphones. And that I would have probably thought was cool because I would want to plug in headphones, of course, to my Game Boy that were official Game Boy brand headphones. Of course, they don't do anything different at all. <laughs> but they kind of look weird. It's kind of almost like a Nickelodeon style of, like, the weird shape thing going on with gr green translucent kind of accents. And then, of course, the purple to match your Game Boy color. And that's about it for that one. Uh... They've got Mario Party playing cards up there. Sorry, we're getting some bad glare. Um, the Nintendo Word magnets. Boy, you could just like print those out of anything nowadays, like on a magnet kind of a sheet. And there's your order form. So you're still uh, paying at least 10 bucks for shipping. But I guess if you had got quite a few things, I know, 10 bucks is not terrible. And then I'm thinking there were some kind of like still Nintendo Power stamps that you would get. 
Yep, one stamp is one dollar off a catalog, off of catalog merchandise. It says, so I imagine I would have saved up some of those and probably got some kind of deal. There's a Nintendo 64 soccer bag, just what everybody needs, and then the uh, kind of real minimalist basic uh, T-shirts that I feel like anybody could just print up. Moving on to spring and summer of 2000. So this must be the next one. We kind of have them uh, right in order for, I guess, these free gift offer inside. Super deals. So these have all appeared in previous catalogs, but the prices are all new. So I guess we'll kind of fly through these, um, but some of them I guess we haven't seen really, because there is a lot of the Ocarina of Time stuff, and maybe even, uh, let's see, no, this is all Ocarina of Time. Um, there's another one of those pocket watches that you could be really cool and have. That's kind of interesting, but that would be, uh, like nobody would really know that's a uh, Zelda thing unless they knew about the Triforce which at the time was more of a insider kind of thing so that would have been uh, kind of interesting Zelda bracelet was $18 now 5 oh I should have jumped on that Could have had a cool leather Zelda bracelet so you've got uh, of course Mario 64 shirts that might be a clock is that a clock where is it uh, I don't know um yeah, weird. Square wall clock, they're saying. It was $24, now 7 I don't know if I just kind of... I guess I wasn't really thinking about putting up a Nintendo 64 clock at the time. It's kind of weird, just the Nintendo 64 logo. Let's see what else we got. The keychains are back. Wow, some of these keychains. So they were selling for a buck fifty. Now this would have been the time to load up on some of this stuff. A set of four... Quiet plush for seven dollars. So that's all these things down here, the old school ones. So yeah, these would definitely be collectible nowadays. I bet. Um, there's the figures. Oh wow, they were five bucks in the last one. Now they're two. Yeah, this is the time to get them. It's like those stories of people finding just you know cases and cases of Earthbound for two dollars. So I haven't looked these up recently, but I'm pretty sure these have some value to them. As I recall, if anybody knows, then uh, make a comment about it. But yeah, I bet uh, getting these for $2, man, you could have bought them out and uh, done pretty well nowadays selling them. And then maybe some, what is that? Uh, a, one stamp is a dollar off your catalog merchandise. So yeah, you could have done pretty well. I'm guessing the shipping rates were pretty similar. I actually don't even see it. I don't know how they did this. I think that was like you would call a toll-free number kind of a thing. So somebody had to man the desk to do all these. And finally, we have the very Pokemon-themed uh, Summer 2000 Nintendo Power. But you'll notice you're seeing only Generation 1 on here. So um, I guess we are not in the gold and silver era yet, at least in North America. And here we go. It's Pokemania. Um... It's still, I guess, this would be the middle of the year for 2000. So, yep, this is uh, the height of Pokemania, as they said on the news stories. Pokemon Candy Catchers. And at the time, I'm, I don't know, I probably, I mean, I would have played Pokemon and liked it already by here, by this time. Um, but I don't think I bought any of, anything from here. Um, some of it, I guess, would have been a little pricey for me at the time so it's not bad here you can get a pokemon lunch bag that's the last thing in the world i would have done at the time um because that it was not cool to like pokemon uh at the at uh for my age group i think i was like a freshman by this time uh in high school and there's some kind of a binder which i'm surprised they're showing supplies in there instead of pokemon cards uh the wonderful Nintendo 64 shirts. You can get a bunch of sweatshirts in fantastic tees, too. Groovy garment washed short sleeve t shirts. Wow, very exciting. To 
It says Nintendo 64 on it. And he, look at this. Would you even know this is a, it has nothing to do with Nintendo. A clear watch barely says Nintendo 64 under the most basic number kind of set. Well, at least it was only $5. So that's all it's worth. And then you've got your strategy guides and soundtracks. Those are kind of in every one. There's the trading card game for Game Boy. And they had Pokemon Stadium out by this point, it looks like. Here's some of your, uh, man, they are still pushing these Donkey Kong characters with Funky Kong, who would not have even been... And there's, yeah, they still have these characters that they're selling from Donkey Kong Country 3. I wonder how much, how well these sold. Uh, the redesigned or re from the original. So these are Beanbag Yoshis. I'm sure I've seen them somewhere, but not a ton. A lot of stuff we've already seen. Uh, here's all this again. The controller glove kind of thing. The uh, headphones and these holders. And the squeaky Nintendo 64 case, which I'd already had such bad experience with I would not have bought this. But now they've got the Nintendo logo up there. So it makes it real fancy. Oh, and there's the Nintendo 64 sunglasses for some reason. Five dollars. We're seeing more of the backpacks that we've already seen, and there's a game holder. Um, nothing I would have probably shot for too much. There's that Game Boy color case that holds a bunch of different stuff again. Some extremely um, minimalistic kind of uh, t-shirts, like denim-looking things. Now look at that talk about barely Nintendo related at all. It's just like a little tiny key holder. One of those uh, lanyards, the retractable ones that you get for free everywhere. And then DK plush not included. Why are they even showing it on there? And then you've got the binder, the Donkey Kong 64 wallet again. So and they've got some uh, Pokemon stuff on the back. Of course, we saw this, I think, that whole page pretty much. But now they've got... Well, did they have this before? I don't remember. They had the green, purple, and orange before. But yeah, they're still pushing those. So, yeah, I definitely have more than these because I did order th a couple things at least. And one of those things is right here. And we only saw a little picture in the background so this was this must have been older than the spring 98 catalog maybe or maybe somewhere in between there but i got the game boy camera from the nintendo catalog and i, I remember using those points somehow because it came out cheaper to do it this way than in the store and i never got enough uh, kool-aid points to get a game boy camera but I wanted one, and so I got this, and this is what I used to make a lot of um, clay movies with, uh, stop motion kind of stuff, because you would you could take a picture with it, and then move your clay, and then take another picture, and uh, the Game Boy Camera, then you would plug it into your Super Nintendo and play it as like a fast slideshow, and it would kind of animate in a way, and you could add music and stuff like that too. Uh, but the unique thing about this one is, of course, the gold color, and it's full of, of course, with gold Zelda stuff. So keeping in line with the gold cartridges for Zelda, they made a gold Game Boy camera that is Zelda-themed. So the stuff that was in there was like these little stamps that you could put on pictures so you could make yourself look like uh, the anime kind of looking Link or Zelda. Um and have little accents on your picture like that, like their eyes and their hats and noses and ears and stuff like that. And so, you know, it was, it was interesting. It was a good way for me to get the camera, I guess, for a little bit cheaper than uh, I normally would have been able to. But little did I know, this is an exclusive for the Nintendo Power Supplies catalog, and they must have only had it in just one or two of them, uh, apparently. And now it is rare. And the last time I checked, this is over $1,000, uh, some of the comps for what this is sold for. 
which, I mean, I would have treated mine a little nicer if I would have known that. We got a couple of little scuffs and dings on it. Uh, I mean, I probably had clay all over my hands when I was touching it before, you know, making movies and stuff on it. Um, but, I mean, I kept it in decent shape since then. Uh, so I'm going to have to find another way to display that. It's got some good sentimental value to me for making some of my first videos. Very grainy, uh, low pixel videos. But... Yep, there it is. It's kind of an interesting thing that I, you don't see every day. If you ever do see that out in the wild, uh, I would definitely pick it up if it's cheap because from what I've seen, it's pretty rare and kind of desirable now. So, I mean, I can imagine for Zelda collectors, you know, if you want the gold cart version of everything, you might not have the gold cart version of everything until you get the gold Game Boy camera from the Nintendo power super power supplies catalog <laughs> so that's all i've got today on this stuff maybe i'll find some more and be able to make another one i know they made similar things to these later that are kind of cool kind of little time capsules for like uh, when game boy advance came out and stuff a little bit later uh but this was some of the ones i had hanging around uh just from my collection of nintendo power uh magazines anyway all right bye